everybody. I'm Justin Bone. And I'm Mike Val. And this is the Bone and Zano Zone, where we are always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Bone and Zano Zone podcast. Mike, I'm super excited for this one, but we have a lot that has happened in the bowling world over the past two or three days. Yeah, there is a lot that's been happening, and uh, I think we need to inform everybody and just give a little recap of what's happened in the past 24 hours. Uh, you go right ahead. Go right into it. Well, how about the first one uh, coming out yesterday, Chad Murphy, the USBCs officially done for the year. Yeah. And um, it, it was it was, it was was obvious it was going to happen. I mean, yeah. everything being pushed back. It was a no-brainer. It was definitely not good to see, but no. I think with all of the states closing back down, like, Obviously, we were supposed to go to SYC in Nashville uh, next weekend, like 10 days from now, and we can't go now because of the quarantine rule. Mm-hmm. We'd yeah. have to quarantine for two weeks when we come back, and, well, I mean, we're obviously, we obviously can't do that. So, yeah. I mean, things are starting to go backwards, unfortunately. They are, and it was a no-brainer, and it, it stinks for, you know, everybody that wanted to go and for the USBC and for the city of Reno, but... For the well-being of everybody else, it was the right decision from uh, USBC. So absolutely, absolutely. We'll see everybody in Vegas next year. So, uh, what else happened in the past twenty-four hours here, Mr. Bone? Um, do we want to talk about the PBA events that are going to happen this weekend? Really quick. Sure. So, um, the PBA Tour Finals and the PBA King of the Lanes will be coming back for five straight days, back to back, of action-packed bowling live on TV. Saturday will be qualifying rounds one or qualifying for the PBA tour finals at 12 o'clock and two o'clock step ladder group one will be at 12 step ladder group two will be at two and the championship match will be at four o'clock. So be sure to tune in in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday this weekend for the PBA tour finals. And then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday night are the king of the lanes, which will have many different players. Boys, girls, and it's going to be a good time. Those will take place Wednesday, Monday from 8 to 10, Tuesday from 7 to 9, and Wednesday from 8 to 10. So be sure to tune in to the PBA Tour Finals and the PBA King of the Lane Series as live bowling comes back to TV. And it's going to be great to see him on TV. Um, really quick, in other news, uh, let's get off the bowling topic. Uh, congratulations to you once again. Not only are you or you were selected as an All-American, but now you are an officially licensed driver in the state of New Jersey. It took you almost three months, three and a half months to get your license. Oh, yeah, it was a long time. So kudos to you. Congratulations for waiting at the line at the DMV. And now you are an officially licensed New Jersey driver. Congratulations. I had the short line today. My my line was only about three hours. God. Uh, That was the short line. Miserable, (laughs) miserable. They, but, they stopped handing out tickets for the line at 1040 and they closed at 430. So it's like you're at the supermarket waiting to get your like your cheese at the deli, basically. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, congratulations to you. You finally Thank have you. your license and uh, drive safely. And now you can come down here and visit us when you want to. Sure. You could do a show on location down uh, down we in my could. place. Now. We, we could. could. But we, we do have our guest uh, waiting, Justin. And I think without any further ado, you should introduce her. So... A three-time collegiate MVP at my alma mater, Moorhead State University, the 2000 PWBA Rookie of the Year, six-time major champion on the ladies' tour, um, 14-time member of Team USA, blah, blah, blah. We're just going through the laundry list of stuff, Justin, like we always do with these legends that join us, you know? Yeah. Um, 22-time gold medal winner across the globe, the first women to win on the PBA tour, the pride of Union, New Jersey, a local one, Justin, the great Kelly Kulik. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Good Kelly. Evening, How are we? Good uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, we're hanging in there. You know, things are things, right? How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. It was a beautiful day. It was nice, cool breeze in the air, which I'm always happy for before that humidity comes rushing in tomorrow. So did yeah. some stuff around the house and great, fabulous day. Thanks so, so much for having me. This is wonderful. Thanks for coming on. Thanks yeah, the weather was yeah. actually pretty nice today. I waited outside, like Mike said, in the motor vehicle line. And the sun was under the clouds, and it was like 70 with like a nice breeze. Oh, it was perfect. I, yeah. didn't, get, I didn't get too sunburned today. 
If you got that's sunburned, good news. Good news. You know, where'd you get your suntan from? Ah, the DMV. That's what you got to tell everybody. <laughs> oh, you got a really good tan, Justin. Where'd you go? You go to like Florida, California? DMV. Uh, oh, DMV. Hey, DMV. DMV. So, so, so Kelly, how, how are you doing during this whole shutdown debacle we have here? What, what have you been up to? You know, gentlemen, I've really, I've been managing better than I thought I would. I had planned on taking some downtime this season anyway. Um, as a homeowner, you know, they, my friends always joke, the joys of home ownership. So I found little projects along the way. I've painted a few rooms. Um, I put some shelves up, reorganized my basement, my garage, um, in terms of the tasks of the house. So I have one more replacement item to do, even caulked both the shower and the bathtub. So DIY, do it yourself projects has definitely been on my top agenda. But also I've been staying physically fit. I, I've been a substitute instructor at our local YMCA now for I think 11 years. And uh, one of my fellow trainers who I love to take his classes, I started doing Zoom classes three days a week. So I take his on on four days and I teach mine on three days and I've just been enjoying it. So really, really appreciating the downtime, mentally trying to stay, you know, sane, not going too crazy. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we can't get to enjoy the amenities of the Jersey Shore. I'm kind of avoiding that because of, of, of the people and some things that they're just not observing. So, so far, so good. And I, I can guarantee as a homeowner, you're, you're going to find more projects to do. Justin, I'm sure when you guys moved into your new home, there's still boxes that aren't unpacked yet. Not only are there still boxes that aren't unpacked, dad's probably putting 10 more projects on the list every single day. Yep. So it, there's always something to do. And it's, it's miserable. When you think about it, it's just like, holy crap, I, I sit down for 10 minutes and I'm like, I got to go do something again. Yeah. <laughs> it, Justin, it's miserable. I just built a house and we moved in in February. I'm down in Barnegat, Kelly. Okay. And um, it, it's miserable. It, it's every day there's something else wrong. It is misery. I mean, Justin, you hear every time I come over, I complain and your father laughs at me and thinks it's hysterical, but it's miserable. And every day there's a new project. So kudos to you for being so handy. I'm miserable I, I can't do i don't know how to hammer a nail i'm so bad it's ridiculous well some of the stuff i can do myself a lot of it is with the help of course google um, <laughs> and then my brother-in-law is a carpenter so he's actually helped me on one thing to come over he cut the pieces of wood i actually measured and hung them though so that was good the elbow brackets the shelf brackets even the painting i, I taped it and a whole ceiling and everything i like i feel more accomplished and and, and I cheat a lot when I do it myself, but I, there are things worth paying for. I will say that. I missed those classes at Moorhead, I guess, Justin. I didn't take those kind of classes when I was at Moorhead State. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I definitely didn't. I was too busy practicing in the little six-lane dungeon or eight-lane dungeon we had there. Yep. So have you ever, if Justin, you've never been to Moorhead, obviously, right? No. no do you not. know, Kelly, the, the, they've redone it since we've been there. I was out of there in 2005. Yeah. But Justin, it was, what, was it six lanes? Six lanes or eight lanes? I don't remember. Six, six lanes. Six lanes, yep. And they were just it, no air conditioning. Um, oh, brutal! It was hot, old, beat up wood. But uh, honestly, that I, I learned a bowl in that place, um, and I'm sure you can attest to it. I mean, that was a good place to practice. Yeah, and for those of you who don't remember, Liz Johnson went to Moorhead State. She just went for one year before she went on tour, and uh, not intentionally, but she used to hustle the guys a lot in that six lane center there, Wood Lanes. They totally redid it after I graduated. A few years. Eric Spurlock, um, I think Kegel had donated synthetic mm -hmm. lanes, brand new paint job, an updated machine. So it's it's more of a quality uh, center now than it used to be. But Justin, also it's it's interesting because you want to learn how to play deep inside angles next to the ball return. We had a pole yep. in between lane four and five. So we had to kind of drift our way around the pole if we, we had a ball in lane five and six, kind of interesting. Yeah, and, and the pins were just so dead there. They were like waterlogged and it was like bowling against a tree, but <laughs> What, yeah, what 1970s. A place to, but what a place to bowl, Justin. That that should be a well, not now, but it would have been a good bucket list item for you to go visit eventually. Maybe when we make a road trip to somewhere, that will be on our bucket list. Absolutely. All right. So, so Justin, why don't we get into it? We have a couple questions for the for the legend tonight, and we're going to have some fun. And uh, why don't you go kick it off there, Mister Bone, Mister Driver? Sure. So, being from New Jersey, where did you start? What centers did you practice at? Who locally helped you and who did you idolize like in the area? Ooh. Oh, wow. All right. So unfortunately, these centers don't exist anymore. And Justin, I'm sure your your mom and dad or dad for sure might have told you about it. But 
The four seasons where Frankie Valley got a start was is now a Costco, was a 64 lane center. And then when you went further west on Route 22, we had Echo Lanes, which is now an AMC movie theater, also 64 lanes. So two okay. 64 lane centers within three miles of each other. And they were both always packed. Wow. Uh, even, um, yeah, Echo Lanes even had the overhead ball return. So you always Ooh. kick the ball return when shooting that 10 pin for sure. Uh, my junior league bowling started at Linden Lanes, which is a 24 center. Now it's a nationwide facility. And I grew up there. Joe Hegedus was the Joe Hegedus and his wife, Emil. His son, also Joe, was a little bit older than I was. Bowled there on Saturday afternoons. They were my YABA, you know, junior coaches, the one that got everyone together, that handed out the applications for the tournaments. We had YBCs, Youth Bowlers Club back then, before we had the JBTs, and just a great family, wonderful people, really got us interested. He's the one that actually suggested I went to the Dick Ricker Bowling Camp in upstate New York. And then now practicing so forth, uh, Jersey Lanes, Chuck Fadigay owns that one as well as Parkway Lanes. So the benefit of that is Jersey Lanes is synthetic, Brunswick synthetic, and um, Elmwood Park, Parkway Lanes is AMF HPL. So I get to practice on a variety of conditions, multiple surfaces, which is great. Uh, locally, I can't really say offhand if there was someone, you know, near me that I watched or emulated. Obviously, New Jersey has a strong heritage of great legendary bowlers. Your dad, Marianne DeRupo, the Doran sisters, Carolyn and Kathy, um, even some, some more great ones. Johnny was from Staten Island, but now migrated over to Jersey. And uh, basically, the older gentleman in the adult junior league, you know, the, the 16, 17, 18 year olds. I just emulated them. That's how I really learned to hook the ball. And traditionally from East Coast bowlers, when we grew up, like Mike said, on the on those wood lanes, we really learned how to go, the phrase is coast to coast, left to right for that right-handed bowler, because the lanes were always so dry. So my hook style game really developed from my local area. And then again, watching those crankers, just, you know, Bob Vespi and all those guys, 400 revs back then is like 750 now. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that, that's good stuff. Where was Four Seasons, Kelly? I never heard of that place before. Four Seasons. So right in Union, before you're getting on Route 22, there was also something called the flagship, the Wiz, the flagship. It's a, like I said, now it's a Costco. But as you're coming up Chestnut Street and merging your way close to Route 22, it was right on the right hand side, a big, huge center. Great, I mean, birthday parties galore and what's great about both centers, Four Seasons and Echo, is you had to walk down the stairs. So the overview for viewing was was fantastic. Similar to Carolier, mm -hmm. where people had to walk down the steps and everything. Yeah, 64 lanes. I remember that they had these two houses at each end for the kids' birthday parties. And just, um, you know, like stepping back definitely in time to, to, bowl, to walk in that building. Here's one, Justin. Yeah. Car Carolier on Route 1. Did you ever bowl at Edison Lanes, Kelly, or no? I have only, I think maybe two times. So that was a hundred local. More than a hundred and hundred and twelve, hundred and twelve yeah. straight yeah. across, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think we it were. was the largest in the state of New Jersey, of course. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. think of that. Just think of that. One hundred and twelve there, and ten minutes down Route One, you have eighty-two at Carolier. You have two hundred lanes. That's amazing, and they probably filled the place every night. Oh yeah, I would, I would, I would bet money on it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Back to saying how you watched the the rev rate, and that's where your game came from. It was the same with me and Brandon growing up watching dad on tour. I mean, obviously, my dad doesn't hook it a whole lot at all. And me and Brandon have rev rates that are 500. I mean, you don't get that kind of rev rate from Parker, right? <laughs> so it will. Justin, your your father, and just to give him some highlights, I mean, your dad was one of the premier lefties that could go up the lane really well and play the gutter, but then also go in and swing fifth arrow with no issues. I mean, I remember multiple shows where I saw him do that. The only one right behind him that was capable was Jason Couch. So your dad's versatility is a credit to, again, the environment. And then also... I mean, I remember your youthful years when you would travel with mom and dad on tour sometime and you guys would practice. The technology, the grips, the fit, it was such a big deal. Back then we were so super stretched and squeezing it and so forth. So you've had the opportunity to learn from the past generation of some of the tricks that you may not learn today from today's bowlers, but however, have all that advancement going on with the videos and YouTube and the better fitting pro shops and, and the grips and the ovals. So it's a different... Uh, not, I wouldn't say 
orange and apples, but really just a great migration of learning to how at your age of 18, you know, how you're getting where you were, took me probably an extra two or three years. And right. again, it's just for the timing of what it was. Yeah. So, so Kelly, being from Jersey, what, and coming from a fellow Moorhead Stater here, what made you choose Moorhead? More, well, I really, I didn't look at a lot of universities. I was going to, I looked at Florida State my, or University of Florida. My mom wasn't great about me going that far away from home. Um, I got into High Point University in North Carolina, didn't have a bowling team, but they had my area of interest. And fortunately, I had some local Jersey bowlers, Ellen Eichenlob. Um, oh, and Frank, then, uh, Frank, yeah. that Frank I, I know Frank really well. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, Ellen. Ellen went a year before me. I met a roommate. Um, the local bowlers, Vicky Grice and Mike Mullen, had come to see an Ellen Bowl, and then I met them. And then I really went to when Showboat Lanes was still there in Atlantic City. I watched them compete, and I met Larry firsthand. And he was just one of those guys, Mike, as you know. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to buy you or pressure you to come to university. He just gave you the information. He gave you that good handshake. If you have any questions, let me know. And it was just felt like a very welcoming environment. And um, smaller school, I just knew I wanted to get out of New Jersey. I really wanted to experience what it was like to be an adult and and, and live on my own for a while. Culture shock going to Kentucky, though, wasn't it a little bit? Oh, it's, and it's, it's, wow, you graduate in 05, and there was much improvement then, but now going back, you know, 2018 and 19 and seeing how much the town has actually grown. Justin, to give you an example, a night out for us was going to Walmart and walking yeah, around. Exactly. And they're, and they're really, you know, the movies were $1.25, $1.50. Mm -hmm. um, there was no drinking on Sundays. You couldn't buy alcohol, not that I Dry County. Nope, Dry, Dry County. Dry County. Yeah, you really, and it was typically a suitcase college. Majority of the of the population of students were from local counties in the state, and they would just go home for the weekend. So all the athletes really, you know, especially the bowling team, would find activities to do, Cave Run Lake and, and driving around, highway drives and stuff like that. And you were about, we were about like two hours away from like what I would call civilization, like the mall, Lexington, two yeah. hours away. We, we bowled league there, Justin, in yeah. uh, Mount Sterling. So that's about an hour away from where Moorhead was. And we drove about an hour, hour and 15 is the bowl league once a week. Yeah. Now that's how um, I, I went to school with Johnny Jr. So Johnny Jr. and I, we roomed together. And he was like, didn't know what to do. He couldn't get Dunkin' Donuts, couldn't get a cup of coffee. Um, yeah. He couldn't get this. And we would literally drive to the mall in Louisville two hours away or Lexington an hour and a half away just to go do something different. Because in Moorhead, there was nothing there. Justin, it's just completely flatland. That's all it is. Yeah, you saying – Back to the, the league thing. I mean, that's just like on our, our Friday nightly, we got 10, 15 kids that come from yeah. New York or Staten Island every week, driving an hour or an hour and a half on a Friday night. Yeah. And yeah. we had no, there, there were no bowling centers. Like we had the lanes on campus, but we didn't host leagues or anything just to go be competitive. Wow. You were driving an hour, hour and a half to go bowl league. Um, yeah, we were fortunate. Grayson was only about 25 minutes away. Grayson was east and also Morgantown, not Morgantown, excuse me, um, Marshall. You could go to West Virginia, but the, we also, I bowl league up in Ashland. So yes, just like Mike said, it was about an hour ride, but now Grayson's closer at 16 uh -huh. lanes. It's about 25 minutes away. Yeah, so right. it, was, it was pretty cool though. It was, a, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Same here. So yeah. then Mike, what was the reason that you picked Moorhead? Honestly, because... I was doing community school. I was doing the Brookdale, um, Brookdale community for first year. And I went out to the high roller in three or four, whatever it was. And I was talking to Dave O'Sullivan. We don't know who Dave O'Sullivan is. Yeah. And I bowled JBTs with Dave from New York and whatnot. And he said, you know, I'm at Moorhead. And we had a friend, Evan, who was up in Livingston. He was going from Shippensburg to Moorhead. Johnny Jr., who I've known Johnny since I've been four or five years old was going to Moorhead. He goes, we can take what we've done locally in Jersey, New York, and go try to win the national championship at Moorhead. Yeah. That's all I had to hear. So like, yeah, I was going to Kentucky, but I took it as I'm going to go to school with the guys that I knew bowling. And now we're going to try to win the national title down there. And that kind of made my decision even easier. And right. we finished second the one year to, to Wichita. Um, that was the, the rash year, rash, Nathan Bohr, and I forgot who else was on the on the Wichita team, but that's what made me do it. It was just a no brainer at that point. Like all my friends were down there, and there it was. You know, yeah. all right. Makes and sense. we had Bob Bobby Brown and Bobby Brown was that his name? Bobby Brown. Yep. Yep. Bobby Brown. Yep. And Larry and Larry Wilson is one of the greatest guys in the world. He was an older man, Justin. He was the head coach, but 
he'll give you the shirt off his back. He was just, like Kelly said, just sincere, sweetheart, just a real nice guy. Couldn't ask for anything better than anybody better than that guy. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah. So I got the next one, right, Mike? You have the next one, buddy. All right. So Team USA, you did it all and are still doing it all, obviously winning Team USA trials on the women's side the past two years. You've done it all across the globe, winning medals everywhere. You've bowled with some great players. What was the best team you were a part of, and who was your favorite doubles partner? Ooh. 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 Wow, some intriguing questions. Um, favorite team? Well, I, um, I I love bowling with Liz. I, I, I can bowl with her every day of the week. She's just a really good friend, and, and wow, just she inspires me every single day when we're bowling together. Carolyn Doran Ballard, you know, she's got this this iron steel in her. This uh, My mom would call it the eye of the tiger. For sure. That was when we were over in Hong Kong. And then, of course, on that team was Stephanie uh, Johnson, Shannon O'Keefe, um, Shannon Plahowski. And that was uh, our, well, that was that five. We had one more. I think we had six people go then. So it was a really great year back then in, in Hong Kong. So probably our great team when we won was one of our proudest moments. And then we got to win again when we were in Abu Dhabi. Doubles partner. Uh, you know, we've we've bowled the last few times together, the last few years. I really do enjoy bowling with Danielle. Um, communication wise, like she sees her way and I see my way. We don't talk a whole lot together, but her drive and her intensity is something that I can really be inspired by. So even when we were in Vegas, not this last time, I wasn't a part of it, but the year before, time before, I, I was struggling and I made a change and just jumped and we made it to the medal round and unfortunately we lost. But uh, it was we've had some really good runs. I, I would bowl Danielle all the time, but uh, I, I never really got to bowl much so much with the other ladies. Carolyn and I had a run in Hong Kong. Unfortunately, we made it to the finals and lost. Uh, I didn't show up that day. I don't know where I was, but I, I didn't show up. So many great memories. Um, I, I wish I had opportunities to bowl with some of the other legends. You know, I, I wasn't on the team the year Tim uh, Kim Kearney was on and Wendy McPherson. I got to bowl at Wendy once. So that, you know, the dream team, I've been asked that question before, and I would love to have Wendy, myself, Liz, Carolyn, um, you know, Danielle, I just like her work ethic really, really a lot. And um, Shannon Plahowski, nothing, not to take away from any of the ladies like Shannon O'Keefe and Stephanie, they bowl doubles all the time. I just, I mean, you know, Shannon Plahowski wears her heart on the sleeve, very similar to me. You know, that would be some a great dream team for me, too. Again, with it's hard to choose with all the great athletes right now. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a lot of them right now. Yeah, it is. So, so hold on, Mike. Yeah, yes. I got, I got an added question. Absolutely. My mom's sitting right here and she wrote on an envelope <laughs> with my next question. <laughs> so obviously you love to travel. So what is your favorite country to go to? Uh, it's. Well, I, I'd have to say Australia because I, when I'm there, it's their summertime. So I'm usually traveling to Australia at the end of October, early November, and that's when their our seasons are going opposite. So I'm just getting ready to enjoy the warmer weather, which is always an extension. I usually don't get to enjoy the summer like I have this year. So Australia would probably be by far my, my favorite choice just because of the time I'm there. I've been up and down the entire east coast of Australia and hope to get to the western part, even Tasmania I've been to. But I got to say a close runner up second is Germany um, just because of the food, the beer, the people, the traveling there is very accessible in terms of the subway and the train and the trolley. You can get around Europe very, very easily. And uh, one of my favorite, why, why I enjoy going back to Germany and its heritage. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. All right. Better than uh, Abu Dhabi, like your dad, taking a shower in the bathroom <laughs> and the airport. We're not going to talk about that one. So, uh, so. Mom said thanks, by the way. <laughs> sure. And happy Hi, anniversary. Leslie. And happy anniversary to mom and dad, by the way, Justin. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thank yes. you. Well, I'll tell them thank you. Well, it's, not for you. it's not for you. All right, so, so let's let's touch on the men's tour for a second. So you've been asked the question probably a million times. Um, that magical week in 2010. Mm -hmm. Can you break it down? Like, let, let, let's hear it. I, I've never heard it. Like, behind the scenes of the Tournament of Champions. Like, everything leading into that week, during the week qualifying the show – what are you thinking? Like you're, you're, you're on the cusp of making history. So what's going through your head like that whole week? Well, true story. And Justin, you can ask your father this question too. Uh, we're sitting in roll call the, the four before we're starting our first round of qualifying. And Justin, your dad walks over to me and he's just, just asked me, he's like, are you okay? Because you just, you don't look 
okay. And I, I, I told him, I flat out said, I just, I don't feel like I belong here. Cause really the tournament of champions showman, it's, the true tradition is you have to have a national title just to get to that place right there. Tom Clark gave me an invitation cause I won the women's world championships while we were in Detroit. You know, whoever thought, you know, a woman was going to make it all the way to the TV show, let alone win. So your father walked over to me and, and, and that was the start. And my friend, Bill Ireland, I said this before he goes, go in there. You got nothing to lose. Don't be afraid. Just go bowl. And the first game, I think I shot 164 or 168, and I was second to last. And then I started on the end pair, and I made the turn to the middle section of the house. And next thing I know, I just I bowled, and I was bowling good. I was bowling good, and I just kept bowling great. And um, back then on the tour, there was no coaching. I'm sure there were guys texting or whatever. I, I, I never really have my phone out when I'm bowling, but there was no coaching allowed. So it was really just me. Made the top 24. My mom was there, and she just kept urging me to keep doing well and have fun, enjoy, make sure I was eating well and resting and so forth. And then next thing you know, I, I get to match play and start out the last round, not a little shaky. Next thing I know, Tony Reyes was still left to me. He was playing around the track. I was a little too far right, moved in. Next thing I know, I just, my scores went through the roof and made it to the show. And the night before I just, when I'm at the Ricker camp in the summertime, previously to this last five years, I haven't been there. Uh, when I'm around my, my instructors and my friends and I'm with, when I was with Dick practicing, everything as a bowler you want to do when you're practicing, it just was like that. It was so easy. You, oh, play 20, play 10, take your hand out of it, throw it harder, throw it softer. So I put myself, I visualized myself in that great place of when I'm there with my friends and, and, and my mentor and what that feeling is like. And that's the feeling I took into the telecast the next day. And uh, I really, you know, behind the scenes, everybody was talking about Mika and Chris. And, you know, there were some comments going on the computer. And I said, no, those guys are roommates and so forth. And with a practice session prior to it's like, well, they're not going to do anything stupid because they don't want Rhino, who's a sole lefty on the show, to run away with it either. And um, I just watched where they threw their shot. I jumped on top of them. I broke down the track. And then the rest is really what it was. It was history. I, as your dad would say, Justin, bowl the pins. Don't bowl your competitors, bowl the pins. And I was so focused on what I felt comfortable doing. But that's all that mattered. And it was, and, and the rest is history. So did they look at you like any different after that? Like when you bowled other stops, did, did they give, I don't say give you more credit, but did they look at you as like, hey, like she really belongs here because she beat us. Like something, you know what I mean? Um, well, I know that's like, I, a, it's like a double standard, you know, like you belong there because of your ability regardless, but yeah. now that you've, you, you went in there and like you said, you felt like you didn't belong, but you didn't have a national title, but you earned it and you were a woman. Like, did do you get a look at it at a different light, like at a higher level now? Like, Hey, like she really can play. Um, most majority of the men were my friends, you know, <laughs> whether close or just, you know, competitors, so forth. I heard a lot, a couple of naysays, you know, some people were questioning why I was being helped. You know, if the guy had I drilled me two balls for the show, why are you helping or why'd you do this? And like, I'm a player, I have to equal opportunity. Hopefully like we want to see everywhere these days. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I had a newfound respect, I think amongst all players, all competitors, not just men, but women too. You know, Parker, Robert Lawrence sat in the show and watched. There's a few that stood behind to watch the performance. Uh, I, I really, I, I can't say I have any regrets. I really just wish I had more success when I was exempt on the tour. And I always felt like I was missing something along the way, but no, it was, it was for that week. I was the best. That's what it Absolutely. comes down to. That week I was the best. I just endured. I bowled and I came out uh, on top that week. I was the best that week. So I got one more, Justin, really quick. So what uh -oh. was, what do you think the biggest difference is between you see the patterns on the ladies' tour and how they break them down to how they break them down on the on the men's tour with everything. Is it just the ref rate, the two hander, the one hand? Like, what what's the biggest thing you see? The different the di differential of uh, the difference. Sorry, between both of them. Well, the obvious is it, it, men can generate more ball speed and more rotations. That's just the obvious. Physically, they're they're stronger in their capability of doing that. Women have a tendency to, to see things more linear. So they can see front to back, back to front, just as it, they're all can see the lane so well. But women in general like to keep their angles much tighter in front of them. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, they feel comfortable playing straighter. Two, women in general, and I'm not saying all of them, I'm just saying as a generality, and I see this when I'm coaching the youth in Australia, they tend to have later timing. You'll see more um, like an EJ Tackett 
despite, you know, with Gumby, I call him Gumby because he's so flexible. He's 105 pounds soaking wet, but he's able to get the ball past his body very quickly where women in general want to walk with it. So that's when the ball is going away. It's their opposite foot forward rather than that same side of the leg. And um, it's just, it's just generality. The women tend to be a little bit later. And when you're later, it's more difficult to open the inside angles to go inside and out. Men though are just stronger. Their hands are larger. They cover more circumference of the bowling ball. They have more strength in their wrists so far. That's just biological makeup, genetics and everything. Women, though, I will say, like I said, everything's great in our sport because it's equal from the front back of the lane to the front, the weight of the ball. We have a tendency to be more accurate and we're better spare shooters. So I can definitely say that women and men can hit the pocket the same percentage. Men in general, because of that rev rate and ball speed, will we'll slash the head pin off the sidewall and kick out that messenger 10 pin. They'll just be able to throw pins around a little bit more aggressively than majority of the women. All right. Good stuff there. Yeah, definitely good stuff. So now with the PWBA, how do you view women's bowling as a whole? Do you think the talent is stronger now or 15 or 20 years ago when you first went out on tour? Ooh. That it's, it's, it's a good comparison, but not necessarily fair. I mean, when the tour did fold, we, we were averaging 30 to 40 women on a regular week. During the majors, obviously there were more 150, I think maybe 220 was the highest I saw in the Queens and the US Open. Um, I would definitely say we have more members now to 150, an average between 80 to 120 or 100 each week based on the size of the capacity of the venue. I would say the talent pool is, is denser and stronger compared to when I was on. I didn't get to bowl much against Donna Adamick and Nikki Giannilius and, you know, Dee Dee Davidson was was getting um, in her prime but going away from it. Some other great bowlers. Wendy McPherson, I watched her make shows, but then Liz is still going. Cara Honeychurch was a dominating force. Carolyn had that great year. Um, I would say because of college bowling and how much it's grown and our junior gold program and bringing kids all over at such a younger age by adding those age levels, again, just like you, Justin and Brandon and Sydney, you guys learning faster at an earlier age <coughs> where I was learning later on, you guys just grasp it that much faster. And, and what's great about that is in your youthfulness, you can learn things much faster and your body can adjust to it because of the growth plate still adapting rather than trying to learn it when you're 25 or 35. Um, I would I would say now, because of those collegiate programs, the competition is, is stronger now. All right. And yeah, just from like looking at it the past five years, I mean, it's def there's definitely been a lot of college bowlers. Like when yes. you look at the top so many in points, it's, there's obviously the ones who are really, really good, like the Shannon O'Keefe's and the Danielle McEwen's and ladies like that, but most of them are not very far out of college. No, not at no, all. No, Sydney Brummett, um, you know, Verity Crawley just graduated a few years ago. Diana's been out a few years. Rocio, graduate of Wichita. Um, yeah. Maria, she's in her 30s. But again, it, even though there's that different age gap and so forth, yeah, the younger ones for sure. Look out for Gigi. Jasmine, she's going to be featured on the King of the Lanes. That, whoa, what an up and comer she's going to mm -hmm. be. Um, you know, more of the girls on my staff that I know of, Stephanie Schwartz and some of the Team USA players, Mabel Cummings, wow, is that girl going to be a star? Jillian is going to be another future star. And you've seen those young women compete at the SYCs and, and what yeah. they're, Jillian Martins, God, oh my God, the girl hooks the ball more than I do. <laughs> Her feet were further left at, at team trials than mine were. I'm like, what is this girl doing? <laughs> so yeah, there it's... Yeah, you know, I hate to say it, but the logo of our of our organization, the future of the sport, it's it's getting tougher and tougher. I, I hope that somewhere and there's in the horizon that there's an Olympic platform for those oh those young ladies to to show their their stuff because just it's it's wow. I mean, just wow. Yeah. All right, Justin, that answered your question. Yeah, it it definitely did. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw it to you for the time frame questions. All right, so what we do, Kelly, at the end, we the, the guests will go one-on-one -on -one with me, and uh, we just have a little bit of fun. They're nothing too bad, too crazy. But, okay. uh, we're I like crazy. Stuff. Yeah, we, we, we're crazy within reason. Yeah. Okay. All right, within reason. Right, Justin? Yeah. Keep it clean. Right. Keep it clean. Yeah, absolutely. We, we do. All right, so being the first one, so being from New Jersey, we're going to settle the argument right now. Is it pork roll or is it Taylor ham? Let's just get this right out of the way. Oh man, I knew you were gonna put me on the spot with that one. Well, I mean that's that's the easy um, one. And, and Justin, well, what do you call it? Is it pork roll in the bone oh, house or is it, it is pork roll? Pork roll. 
Yeah, absolutely. See, I, I, it's it's different parts of the state you're in. I think the yeah. northern part calls it Taylor ham. The yeah. southern part calls it pork roll. Yeah. When I order, I want a Taylor ham egg and cheese. So I got to say Taylor ham. Really? Yeah. But I know pork roll. I mean, it's in the yeah. start of this thing. It's never on sale at the grocery store. Son of a gun. No, it, it isn't. It's in, in, especially now with the COVID. They jacked the prices up with that and bacon. So. But it is a Jersey staple by far. Yeah. Taylor ham egg and cheese. Well done. It's got to be crispy. Got to be yeah, crispy. Uh, you got to put the slits in it too. That's the only hard. way for me. On a hard roll. On a on hard, a hard roll. roll, yeah. All right, so let's go to number two. We'll get off the food topic, all right? We'll, we'll, that, Ooh, that could be come an argument. Come back to the food later. I like we'll, food. We'll come back to food later. We can do that, Justin. Um, <laughs> who's your toughest opponent throughout your career? Toughest opponent? Oh, gosh. Back on the tour, I used to always lose to Shanna Ray. Why? I don't know. We never saw each other on a TV show, but I used to always lose to Shanna Ray. Leslie knows who I'm talking about. Um, currently... Currently, she's laughing too. I can hear her laughing. Um, <laughs> currently, my toughest opponent. Oh my goodness! I don't know. I, I seem to lose to everybody lately. So it's just, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm so good at finishing second when I'm on the telecast. It's just the general population. Let's leave it at that. the field. We'll take the field as the answer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, 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 next year, I'm telling you, number two is going to be wiped off the shoulder, and there's going to be some number ones knocked back there for sure. We want. That's what we want to hear, Justin. We want to hear that oh. stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's go to the next one here. Um, the 2012 U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. How impossible were those lanes outside in Reno? Uh, <laughs> because that, that was something that nobody's ever seen anything like that before. No, but I, again, crediting my generation growing up with, with the Ricker program, we, we learned to bowl on dry, on wet, mm -hmm. on long, on short, you know, the versatility in the hand position, which all the college coaches are teaching these days. So you basically you just took the lane out of play. And I know for a fact, you know, we used to shoot spares on dry lanes, you know, back in college for sure. I know Larry made us do that. We always played low ball at Moorhead State. I mean, mm -hmm. Mike, come on. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, before yep. you even put your shoes on, you were playing low ball. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just, I just, you know, went back into my, my storage bin of what I could do. And, and it was, I think the advantage for me is that I was the last one. So the lanes were going to be destroyed no matter what. And the chance was that they were going to reoil between each show, uh, each match would have been a given a, a sure advantage to the, the woman who previously won. So it was just like, how do I get the ball to hit the head pin and knock down, you know, almost 10 pins if I could do that? It was, kind of like, it was kind of like bowling the Peterson, if you ever bowled the Peterson before. I've heard, I had yet to bowl it. I know people think that's strange, but yeah, it was the elements outside, you know, jokingly, my hair is always in a ponytail. It's just cool. It's off my neck, but I took every precaution to be comfortable, to keep my hair out of my face, you know, to try to make it as normal as possible and just play what I saw. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. I had to try to keep my hair out of my eyes too. When I bowl these days, Justin, I, challenge, right? I know it, it, it's the COVID hairstyle. So um, let's go out of that one. What <laughs> next one? What's the most pressure filled shot you've ever had to make in your career? Um, that's a, that's a pretty good one here, Justin. I think this is a pretty interesting one. Yeah, that is a really good one. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm thinking I, I got one Kelly moment that I'm thinking of. There's a few that pop into mind. I mean, the, the college team yeah. championships was by far, I had a double intent to win. That's the one I'm and, thinking uh, of. Yeah, it, it really. You know, we were down, it was a two game match total and we were down like 40 or 50 pins and it came to the 10th frame, which I had been, I was really not to toot my own horn. Sorry, but I, I was really solid pretty much all week during the qualifying and stuff. We got to show and to, to have to double the win. Yeah. That was an exciting moment. Yeah, That's for sure. One. That's the one I yeah. was thinking of. The dressing, yeah. we, we think alike. <laughs> That's how we do it. All right. So um, let's say professional bowling starts dying down. Kelly's coming at the end of her career. Um, you see yourself going into the, into the broadcasting role? We kind of like Kelly in the booth. Like, do you see yourself maybe going into the booth after oh. after bowling? I, I, many people have have complimented me on my my commentating. Um, Dave Ryan, especially being a co-host with him, uh, has been. He's taught me a lot about media and broadcasting and so forth. I do do credit to him. Um, he has said time and time again, I'd have to, if I wanted to go in other sports, I'd have to research and catch up. You know, there's only so few sports I seem to know a lot of technically stuff about technical stuff about, mm -hmm. but if bowling is still around and they asked me to come out and do it, um, I, I would like to, to do so. I think I give the perspective of the coach, 
the athlete and the participant, and then just what I'm seeing overall in that live atmosphere. So I always, it's, it's not dumbing it down. It's just being able to, I'm always, I'm a big believer in education. You know, I don't want to yell at my nieces. I want to teach them. So they do something wrong. Well, let's find the right way to correct it. And sometimes I have to say it's challenging to pick up something when it happens so fast and, and I'm honest. So I'll, I'll truthfully say, Hey guys, I'm not really sure. She might've pulled down and so forth on the swing, but I, I have enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. Um, I want to make the women shine. I was never a big fan, sorry, but of McEnroe because every time McEnroe commentated, he always went back to his his game and his stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're not in front of the camera. You're behind it. Put the people in front in the spotlight. So uh, that's, that's my goal is always making those women shine in front of those camera and and finding a positive way to, to, to talk about their game. So so you didn't have anything like you didn't go to your degree from where it wasn't like in communications or anything like that then? No, I have my physical and health education K through 12. All of my, you know, personality tests have been teacher. I've come out that ENGAF, whatever those things are. It's always been teacher. So I'm very good. I can learn visually. I can learn audibly. I can comprehend a lot of things. That's why with the line dancing, I don't have to see the feet. I can really comprehend the steps and be able to apply it. Um, <clears throat> so I, I've just, I'm, I'm very good at emulating and, and copying a lot of things I see. And I just try to put my own spiff on it if I can. I like that. That's good stuff, Justin. Yeah, for sure. Right. Number six, this one's a little bit different. How did you end up doing the ESPN, the body magazine? All the publicity that came from winning the, the tournament of champions, the comic book and everything. And um, I guess they were just looking for athletes to spotlight. Basically someone from ESPN reached out to me and, you know, my running joke was Hugh Hefner, who's now passed away, was not going to ask me to do Playboy. Not that I would do it anyway, keeping it clean. Um, it was just a great opportunity to, <laughs> hence the way, expose myself. So done very taste tastefully. There were five mm -hmm. people in the whole studio. Um, I'm in better shape now than I was then. But, you know, again, to bring more awareness to bowling and yeah. to, to see myself in a, in a spotlight that I probably would no, never see myself in. And bowling needs that. I mean, not saying what, you know, the truth like that, but bowling needs the, pu the publicity. We got a bad rap about it. So. Yeah, what's great about bowling, you know, there's no one size or shape. There's there's so many different body types, and, and that's what's great. I mean, the longevity of our sport from when you're four to when you're 94 and keep going, you know, as, as long as you can function, functional movement, be able to feel healthy about yourself, That that's what's so great about our, our game. That is true. So let's go to number seven. Um, what's the best advice Kelly can give to an aspiring junior player who wants to make bowling their career? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Um, oh boy, that, that, that can't be good if you're laughing on our question. No, question. here's here's the honest Kelly. The honest Kelly is always going to be there. Um, I, I think what the tour is back is a wonderful opportunity. I would love to see it grow even even more in the future to come. I'm just not sure that it's going to get to where I wish it could be. And that's like having the, the 30 to 40,000 prize funds each week. The men have gotten that now. I don't know how long it's going to last, but to, to put them on the pedestal that they deserve to be on. For <clears throat> a young bowler coming in, I would say bowling college, get that to college degree, have that plan of what you're going to do and, and still lead towards your dreams to bowling out on tour. Cause really the best part about the tour right now, it's only 12 events. It's eight and they get to the exempt field. So if you think about it, it's about 53 days that he equates to that. You have to work really, really hard during the season, but even harder prior to that point. So if you can find, if bowling is your dream job, invest into it while you can, um, if you can stay at home while things are, are perpetuating and building up and you can live at home with mom and dad and save some money or find a sponsor. That's what a lot of the athletes did back then. Try it. Get your feet wet. The best thing about the PWA right now, too, is they have that regional program, Titleist Camp Bowl, so you really get a feel of what it's like. Um, I exposed myself and went out when I was dating Jim Tomek on the men's tour. I, I had a basketball coach who said, if you want to be better, play against the best people. And that's going to elevate your game. So for those younger girls, I would say get that degree. No, have a backup plan. Come out on tour, bowl a few times, bowl a year, maybe invest two. See if it's for you. And if it's not, you know, Amanda Green went off to law school. Some of them tried it and then they went off to different careers. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. It's an opportunity to make some extra income and make some money. Um, as a living, unless you're an outlier like Shannon was these last two years and Liz and so forth, you have to find other means of, 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 of work to to bring in that, that financial stability. Good, good answer. So oh, yeah. that's honest, Kelly. That's what we want. We want the honest. 
Yeah. That, that was a good, honest answer. Yeah. All right, let's go to number eight, shall we, Justin? Go right ahead. Uh, you're bowling the USBCs. Obviously mm -hmm. not this year. Um, <laughs> who's your Who's your Who's your team? Who's your doubles partner? Men and or women. Who is Kelly bowling with? Like it's this guy. Well, I mean, I have my team that I go with. You want to know my team currently? Oh, I didn't know. You, I didn't know you partake in the nationals. So yeah. So who's your team? And then if you had to make like the Kelly Dream Team for nationals, who are you putting on your dream team? Well, my team is from the Rochester area. Brian O'Mara, you know, who knows uh, Doug up in, in Newark, New York. He's from Rochester. I bowl doubles with him. We finished, I think, six one year in El Paso, our best finished ever. And then we have some of our local friends from up there that I bowl with. We have a good time. We're somewhat competitive and always looking to get better. Dream team wise, the women, again, Liz is my right hand shoulder. I'd love to bowl with her and Carolyn. Um, you know, Shannon Plahowski, there's four. And I, well, the women, that's four right there. But it, I got to give, you know, this is a nod out, Justin, to your mom, Leslie. I got to bowl doubles with her one year, and that was a lot of fun. I don't know, Leslie, if we were bowling singles or doubles when you shot 800, and I said, come on, girl, let's make a good shot. One more good shot. Said, When's the last time you shot 800? She's like, I never have. <laughs> Such a great day. I was so proud of her, so happy for her that day. Um, so that'd be, you know, part of my dream to bowl doubles with a guy. Let's see. Ooh. What guy would I like to bowl doubles with? Um, oh, man, now I'm really trying to go. Now you're making the brain work, Mike Sorry. and Justin. Sorry. Uh, who would I like to bowl doubles with uh, on the men's tour if I had to pick? No, it's all good. Um, I don't know. We'll have to come back. We'll only do eight and a half. We'll have to come back. All right. All right. So we'll get back to that into the port. Oh, and there she is. Hi. <laughs> Definitely Hi. one of my most awesome. Hello. Fits. Hi. How are you? The, the real bone. Making I'm good. Great Justin. to see you. Great to be part of Justin's show. Absolutely. Yeah. Mike and Justin are doing a great job, and we're so proud. But definitely bowling team with you and the girls here in New Jersey. Each and every year we try to – well, we work around Kelly's schedule so that we can bowl oh. the state tournament together. And certainly that is my, my one and only 800. And my – well, since it's my only one, it's my highest one. So I do have one thing up on the kids right now as we speak, so that's good. Hey, we tied. We got oh, we tied. We have, we, tied. we have the tied high series. Yeah, we tied. Besides that, we tied. Yeah, I gotta say, Justin and Mike to, to Leslie. You know, we do. The the ladies are so great. They they always go around my schedule when I'm home because I'm always traveling so much. It's kind of like their dad and everything and so forth. But it is Jessica and Bridget and Leslie and myself, and we have a fill in from one time. We have swapped people in and out. We've always had a great time, and uh, it's it's definitely a highlight for me. You get to see parts of New Jersey. Go have some some wine or a nice dinner yeah. afterwards. So it's definitely a highlight in April for me for a weekend. Yeah, we love it too. Can't wait to get back on the lane. So same, same here. Same here. Definitely. All right. Yeah. And I, I remember when mom came home that day, we, we got the text. She was like, I just pulled 825. And we were like, wait, really? And she got yeah. home. And she was like, yeah, Kelly came up to me. I had, I had no idea the score. And she came up to me and was like, so how many times you pulled 800? Uh, zero. And she goes, well, if you strike on the fill ball right here, you bowl 825. She goes, wait. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ju Justin, what about what she did in league last year? I, I bowl with Leslie in league, Kelly. <laughs> and for about, what, nine weeks? Leslie didn't move her feet once in nine weeks. And she bowled like 700 every week. She bowled at least 730 for nine weeks. I mean, she didn't move her feet for at least a good, I'm telling you, nine weeks. And it would be 300 one week, front nine the next week, front 10 the next week, 300 the next week. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anybody have that good of a reaction. And just ho hum and what you ball as like seven forty, uh, seven thirty, and it's like ho hum ho hum seven eighty, right? I mean, Justin, yeah. it was incredible. And then COVID hits, and then she yeah, starts. It was and literally hits. every other week. It was oh, unbelievable. Yeah, seven fifty. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. All right, all right. So I got number nine, Justin. Are you ready for number nine? Go ahead. So Kelly, this one's going to be a little bit of a local question, right? So you grew up in the area, and obviously bowled with some guys and people in Jersey. Who's the one Jersey bowler that you think could have made it on tour if they went on tour, either female or male? Good question. I think she's frozen. I think she is frozen. For once, it's not me with the internet problems, Justin. <laughs> or me. Or you. But but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to mom for a second. That nine week stretch she had was incredible. Yeah, it, it was not. We lost, we lost Kelly. Yeah, we did. 
we lost Kelly. It's okay. She'll be back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She will be. She'll be back. Yeah. That was uh, so. So really quick. Um, I, I heard you, you. You you played some bowling yesterday. I heard. Yeah, I did. And how do how do how do we play yesterday? So in honor of the junior gold week that was supposed to be this week, uh, we bowled on one of the fifty foot patterns out out there from this year or from last year. Excuse me. And I bowled 637. Brandon led the tournament with 676. And third was 576. So if it wasn't for me, Brandon would have led the tournament by 100. <laughs> and what happened in the finals? Uh... So it's the way it works. it's a one game single elimination bracket. And I get up and I, I'm not bowling too terrible a game. I did not miss a single pin the entire day. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm proud of that. Unlike my partner, Mike, Mike Dow here. And. Of course. So, like, nine spare, nine spare, eight spare, nine spare, strike, nine spare. I, I split in the middle of the game somewhere, but, like, it was, like, eight or nine, like, every shot made a spare. Mm-hmm. I, get, I get up, strike in the ninth, and oh. then you double in the tenth to win, and over the top seven to lose. It happens. It wasn't my day. It wasn't your day. We're, we're, we're back, by the way. Yeah, we are. So uh, let's bring Kelly back and bring, bring her back. Finish the final ten. Sorry, right. guys. Was, was that me or you? What happened? That's eh, okay. Everybody that joins us always has internet problems. So welcome to the club. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. So so we'll go back to nine nine. I don't know if you heard nine or not. So local question, right? Sure. So all the good local players that are that you've seen here in Jersey and whatnot. Who's the best local person that you think could have made it on tour that never tried it? Guys, you're quizzing me. This is crazy. That's why we do oh. the final ten. We we kind of let it. You know, we want to say, you know, we save the best for last, right, Justin? Oh yeah. Hmm. Mike likes to stump people. I I don't like to stump people, but we like to get real good answers out of people. <laughs> and this is a good one. This is a very good one. Yeah. Because there's a, a lot, one. a lot of good bowlers in this area. You know, I, I'm not. You know, this is serious. I'm, I hate to put it on the spot, and it's not favoritism by any way. But honestly, I would like to see. I would have liked to see Leslie be out on tour a little bit more often. You, you know, Jessica is our, our teammate, and she's bowled a few stops and so forth. But I know Leslie's bowled the Queens and has got the competitive nature from college and so forth. I would have liked to have seen her bowl a few weeks out on tour. Jennifer Russo's done it. She's had some ups and downs. And um, locally, I bowled league in, in Linden Lanes mostly with the gentlemen and Hanover Lanes. Um, some, some good bowlers, but really, I think, you know, I think Leslie would have, would have done very, very well out on tour had she competed a little bit more often. Yeah. I like that answer, Justin. Yeah. She, uh, she was actually planning on, she put that, I think she put an application in for a senior team that say this year and was planning on bowling some of the yes. seniors. And, yeah, that would be great. And was going to do all that. And then obviously nothing's going on this year. And yeah. It's, uh. Yeah, every time we go to the Danny Wiseman Scholarship Tournament, which is down in Baltimore, AMF Country mm-hmm. Club Lanes, and every single time we go, you know, do you remember back in my day I led the tour stop here? <laughs> every time. That's well, nothing wrong with oh, that. Oh, yeah. He was yeah, like, I- the only tournament I ever led on tour was in this building. <laughs> we hear it every year. But she also made a show, a team challenge show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. so... She's done a lot, Justin. Oh yeah, I, I, she knows how to bowl. Oh, she can play absolutely. Oh. All right, so I got one left. Okay, all right. This, this one's a little more on the, on the more serious side. So we had a little fun yeah. with the the food and whatnot. So <laughs> you've done everything: medals, titles, halls of fame. What's left on the Kelly Kulik bucket list? If there's anything left on the bucket list. Yeah, there is. There's there's two things. I've never won the all events or the Masters in World competition. Well, I did in my younger in the FIQ for sure, the youth one. Um, and I have yet to be player of the year. I've been rookie of the year. I've been MVP in college, but I've not been player of the year. And and really, it's it's um, I just feel like I've everything I do, I find is a challenge. And I feel like I can break myself in pieces and each piece can do something really, really well. But every time I take a piece of myself and put it somewhere else, I'm losing that whole part of Kelly that can be really great sometimes. So I've worn a lot of hats. I've, you know, the commentating has been great and the traveling and, and the spokesperson and and coaching and so forth, but all those pieces go in different places. And I really want to bring back and just focus entirely on Kelly Kulik and, and, be a little bit more selfish if that's okay and focus on this upcoming year too. I, and I may not, I'm still not sure I'm going to bowl full time next year. I really, 
I kind of had a, a breakup with bowling. I really didn't love it this last year. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't do very well. My attitude was a little bit on the poor side. And I admit to that wholeheartedly and, and uh, hence the year that I had. But I started off this year with team trials winning and, and breaking the record again and having a good experience. So maybe I just need 2020 to surpass us all and, and, and get my mind in a better area and bring all those pieces and just put them together as, as Kelly Kulik, the bowler. Nothing else, not the commentator, not the, the coach or anything. Um, but unfortunately, that's my general nature. So player of the year is one I'd like to win. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't. I've had a lot of great accolades along the way, but that's by far one of the, the achievements I haven't topped off yet. How's that, Justin? Yeah, that, that was a that was a good answer. That's what she told me just to shove it right there. That was a really good answer. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. a really good answer. Okay, can I ask one more? Yeah, yeah I, I got one more too. Mom, uh, one more go for envelope. it. No, go for it, Justin. You, you, you use the envelope first. So we had... We had Matt on on Monday, and he was obviously a local guy. Now we've got a local girl on. Have you ever been to Pete and Alda's or Federici's, and which one do you like better if you've been to both of them? Oh, the famous pizza question. Famous pizza question. Um, you guys have told me about Federici's. I've had it once, but I don't think it's the same as if I was in the restaurant itself. It was takeaway. Okay. Uh, Pete and Alda's is pretty good. Yeah, so that's local down there. We've got some good places up north, though. So that is true. That's kind, of a, that's kind of a tough one there too. I've got a local joint, Tony's, that makes a great sausage pie, and then you got um, uh, Star Tavern in Orange that's got a really great thin crust pizza. So that, if if I could, so you guys are fellow New Jerseyans. If I could, my dream job, okay, would be when they have the New Jersey food truck going around for that month, testing the hot dogs and and the pizza. That would be my dream job on the bucket list to be one of the taste testers for the New Jersey truck. So every time they put in the magazine, they list the top 50 pizza places. I There's one on my phone that I, I saw. Their magazine actually did it, if you guys bear with me. Oh, this is um, great, Justin. This is what we like to hear. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just saw it, and it's. Uh, I definitely want to try it. It's, uh, it's down the shore. I just saw it not too long ago. Gigi's. Right. Gigi's. Uh, Gigi's New York style pizza in Seabright. And I don't look at that picture. Look at that pepperoni, burnt pepperoni. That Justin, looks good. Justin, we can I can pick you up on the way to tonight, and we can go get some pizza tonight. There uh, you go. And I, just to confirm I, it, I meet you there. Yeah, you can meet me there. Just to confirm it, we said this was back to the pork roll Taylor ham topic. Yeah. So for those who don't know, exit one twenty on the Parkway would be Taylor ham then. Yeah, see, and I'm 139A, so I'm in the Taylor Ham vicinity. You guys in the pork, you know, you say pork roll to me, Taylor Ham, I, I'll, I'll take either. Pork roll, Tennessee, they sell it in the bulk. You have to pre-slice it yourself, and boy, nice and thin with some butter in the frying pan. Yep. <gasps> and you can't get that in Moorhead, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I used to bring it with me back. Yeah, we used to, yeah, we used to, when we used to do a bowling ball, we used to, Johnny and I used to drive from Moorhead here to go see OJ when OJ was a howl. Yeah, and OJ would drill balls for us, and we'd go back on a Sunday night, but we'd load up the car with just a ton of stuff from like your shop, right? And uh, pork roll was one of them, and uh, yeah, couldn't find that stuff down there, Justin. It was like you, you were just desolate, non-existent, exactly non-existent. <laughs> Kelly, you survived my final ten. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, and guys, I wish you know. I'm thinking, I'm still kind of going back in my register here of the, what guy I would like to bowl with, and. Man, there's, you know, I got to bowl with Steve Cook one year in the mixed doubles, and that, that was a fantastic time. Okay. You know, I'd like to go back to, to you know, I, I loved watching Steve Hoskins bowl when I was a kid just to see what he did with the bowling ball. Um, some, so many great bowlers, hard to choose which one, but any of them would be a dream to bowl with for sure. And then they would be honored and we'd be lucky to bowl with somebody like you too. So don't cut yourself short. <laughs> Thank you. No, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Kelly. And, um, Stay safe out there. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but stay safe. I will. And you guys, I got to come back to you with some more pizza opportunities because, like I said, that's my trial. My other place is, I don't know, there's a chain, you know, Hoffman's Ice Cream wasn't in the list, in but that's also. In Point Pleasant. I yeah. Heard that. Yes. Great local yeah. joint, you know, yeah. good ice cream. And wow, it's cheap. It's reasonable. It is, it it's is cheap. 280 for a double scoop, and they're huge. You can go there. Ice Cream on Nine, Justin's another one. Yes. Ice Cream, ice cream on, on Nine is another one right down from Howell. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We, we can we should do one Justin with like just like a food episode. We can do that. We can do one on the road. We can we can do like a, a vlog on the road. Justin's very big into vlogging. Yeah. So Justin, we could do like vlogs like down the shore, like pizza places. Like a ten second clip of each place and do like Well, like, like Guy like Guy Fieri. Like he has that big convertible that he drives around in. We yeah. can we you can drive now in your car and we can just go down the shore to different places, Justin. 
Yeah, maybe we should. Just you need to ask every person people. their favorite pizza place, and you can mark it on that New Jersey map along the way. That's why she is who she is, Justin. Ideas. Yeah. And Kelly's going to either follow us or sit in the back seat. She can pick one. <laughs> yes. If, if, if food's involved, I'll, you, can, you can drive. I'll be the passenger. And then she can tell us how to work it off the next day exercising. Yeah. See, see, I only work out so I can consume a lot of calories. That's the only reason I do it. I the try hell, to stay in shape, but yeah. Can I just say one thing? So, Justin, since I – so, Kelly – we had what was it like a month and a half ago? We did the draft show with the PBA yeah. league, almost two months ago. Yeah, we had Amleto was one of our guests, right? So we were talking about his ridiculous workout routine, and he's he's an animal. So yes. he started. He gave me some tips, and I've been following Amleto's plan for the past about month and a half now. He told me, and I call shenanigans on it, guys. I'm sorry. He hasn't had a piece of cake in 27 years. I, I completely call shenanigans on that. There's no way. No. There's, it's impossible. There's I no. said, I said, what if you like go to a wedding or a party? He goes, he says that was his vice. He told me, I swear to God, he goes, chocolate cakes, sweets was like a drug to me. I haven't had a piece of cake in 27 years. I can't believe that. I'm sorry. Wow. I don't believe it. That that's that's whew, talk about self control. I'm sorry. I, I I call BS on that Amleto. I apologize. No disrespect to Amleto, but I, you can't do it, right? No, you can't. All right. All right, Justin, I'm good. All right, so uh, let's wrap this one up. Kelly, thank you, thank so, you much so much for joining us today. It was an absolute great time, and you survived Mike's final 10. And <laughs> we had a good time talking bowling and also talking food, so maybe we'll have to do something in the future with that. Yeah, we absolutely, do, guys. Yeah. If you want to have me Kelly. back, I'd love to come down. Like I said, you, you thanks for fitting me in the schedule. I had another commitment or else I'd stay a little bit longer. But for sure, I, I'd love to be back on the show. And I'll bring my list of, of top 10 places for food uh, uh, along New Jersey. All right. Well, your, mouth is, your, your mouth has got you in trouble, Kelly. But we're going to take you up on that one. Thank you very much, Kelly. You're welcome, guys. Thanks again. Hide both your families and stay safe, gentlemen, during this you time. You do the same. Thank you, All Kelly. Right. Bye-bye. 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 And there she goes, Justin the Great. Kelly Cure. Now that's going to be an interesting spot. We can do like on the road. Yeah, that, that'll be a fun time. A food, a food uh, day with the Bonus Anno show. That could be an interesting one. No, yep, that'd be a good time. So uh, you want to wrap this one up, Mike? Yeah. So really quick, we have the PBA all weekend. Yeah. We are going to be back on Tuesday with another one. Are we? Um, well, we normally do Tuesday and Thursdays, right? We might have to do a separate one for the PBA shows. The, well, I didn't want to leak that one yet, but we could definitely do that. Maybe like a Monday night recap, or 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 we could do Sunday post game right after the final telecast on Sunday. Sunday night, Saturday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. It's all the good. Um, yeah, page to find out. Yes, yeah, so you have to keep on looking at the page and uh, find out what we're up for. Um, Tuesday, I am still working on our guest for Tuesday. All right. So uh, let's uh, get that on the well. And yep. You know what we could do, Justin? We should maybe we should do this, just thinking outside the box here. Okay. Why don't we ask the audience, you know, on our Facebook page who they would want to see us talk to for an hour? Maybe yeah. if they have any special requests. And well, we can make it happen. We can, you know, people want to talk to us. Yeah. We will uh, put a poll out yeah. on our Facebook page and see. Uh, who, who we we should talk to and uh, make it happen. And if anybody, I mean, it could be, you know, a Hall of Famer, it could be a current guy, it could be a local guy. We'll talk to any anybody. You know, everybody wants to talk to us. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Mike, yep. we're going to wrap this one up. Be yes, sure we are. To into the PBA Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It is going to be five straight days of bowling on TV. As for now, I'm Justin Bowen, my partner, Mike Val. This is the Bone and Zano Zone, where we're always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow our Facebook page. Check us out on Instagram, at Bone and Zano Zone. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. And as and, now, and shop buddiesproshop.com for your bowling needs. Yes, sir. Use coupon code ZONE5OFF to save 5% off your next order. And support your local bowling centers. They need it now, guys. So definitely support the local centers as well. Yes, they do. So we will see you guys Saturday, Sun Sunday. Maybe Sunday, June, Monday, Wednesday. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Stay Ooh. tuned. So uh, stay tuned on our Facebook page, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Yeah.